Continuing a 22-year downward trend, water levels in Lake Mead stand at their lowest. As of 2023, Lake Mead was filled to just 27% of capacity. Now scientists are reporting a new discovery on Lake Mead's dry bed. Rocks laced with volcanic ash that rained down on southern Nevada during explosive eruptions roughly 12 million years ago. So in this video, we are going to talk about the real reason Lake Mead is drying up that will blow your mind. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. In the case of Lake Mead, America's largest reservoir, diminishing waters have in recent months uncovered long-buried secrets and other mysterious finds. At least three sets of human remains, including a body inside a barrel that could be linked to a mob killing and a sunken boat dating back to the Second World War. Lake Mead on the Colorado River at the Nevada-Arizona border is the largest reservoir in the U.S. The reservoir supplies water to roughly 25 million people across seven states, tribal lands, and northern Mexico. Lake Mead's water level continues to fall to historic lows, bringing the reservoir less than 150 feet away from a dead pool, so low that water cannot flow downstream from the dam. The loss of water entirely from this source would be catastrophic. You will find things in the lake. It's inevitable, said Michael Green, an associate professor of history at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. It's been sad to watch the lake drop, the islands appear, the baths upring, the marina being moved out further and further. The recent spate of discoveries began in May when boaters spotted a barrel. Inside were the remains of a man who officials say was shot between the mid-1970s and the early 1980s. The killing has the signature of a mob hit, the local mob museum said, and coincided with the most violent period in Las Vegas' past, an era of unprecedented street crime and underworld killings. A week after that discovery, two sisters paddleboarding on the lake came across what they thought were the bones of a bighorn sheep but which turned out to be another set of human remains. Before we move on, support us by hitting subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Now let's get back to our topic. The water shortage is expected to have cascading influence beyond Lake Mead and could potentially disrupt political agreements and management guidelines that have governed the Colorado River Basin since the early 1900s. States that rely on the basin signed the Colorado River Compact in 1922, which sets overarching goals in the upper and lower basins. One of those goals requires a certain amount of water to remain in the upper basin so that it reaches the lower basin. If drought conditions continue, the agreement could be broken. Reporter Michael Saka advises that the ongoing drought could trigger a formal water delivery shortage and what's known as a compact call for the first time. The result could be in upper basin states, including Colorado, are forced to cut off some water users to make sure there is enough water in the river to flow downstream. Regional agricultural use of water could be eliminated impacting the nation's food supply. Skyrocketing costs for urban users of what little water and power are still available could cause mass migrational population shifts. Real estate values could plummet. The dead pool of Lake Mead could transform parts of the Southwest into dead zones. Think it could never happen? It already has on a smaller scale. Although the circumstances surrounding the fate of the Salton Sea in the Imperial Valley are different, the results could be the same for larger areas of Southern California and Arizona that rely on the Colorado River. The loss of water from this vacation getaway destination has transformed the Salton Sea and surrounding area to its current near-caustic state. The record low water levels are exposing sedimentary rocks that haven't been seen since the 1930s when the Hoover Dam was built and Lake Mead filled. Among these rocks, researchers with the University of Nevada in Las Vegas found ash deposits from volcanoes in Idaho, Wyoming, and California. The West climate change fueled drought and overuse of the Colorado River's water have pushed Lake Mead levels to unprecedented lows. As of 2023, the lake's water level was just 1,045 feet above sea level. Scientists are taking advantage of the low levels to study sediment that hasn't been exposed in nearly a century. Smith's research team found white to gray colored volcanic ash weaving through the formerly submerged rocks. They took samples back to their lab to pinpoint the source of the ash, but it wasn't from a single eruption. They found evidence of several volcanic blasts millions of years ago from places like the Snake River Plain Yellowstone area, a tract of inactive volcanoes that stretches across Idaho along the Snake River and into what is now Yellowstone National Park and Eastern California. They also found ash from eruptions only 32,000 years ago, which is not so long ago in the geological timescale. Scientists say the current status of Lake Mead is a stark illustration of climate change and a mega drought that could be the worst in the U.S. West in 1,200 years, NASA's statement said, The low water level comes at a time when 74% of nine western states face some level of drought. 
35% of the area is in extreme or exceptional drought. In Colorado, the location of the headwaters of the Colorado River, 83% of the state is now in drought and the snowpack from last winter was below average in many places. Some media outlets refer to a dead pool as the point at which a dam no longer has enough water to generate hydroelectricity. The more accurate term for that, according to University of Arizona professor Robert Glennon, is minimum power pool elevation. That's when a reservoir is so depleted that there's not enough water flowing through a dam's turbines to make them spin, which means the turbines can't produce electricity. Glennon explained, When the level in a reservoir approaches minimum power pool elevation, the turbines lose the capacity to produce power as they start to take an air along with water and must be shut down before they are damaged. A reservoir that reaches this point usually has quite a bit of water left before it drops to a dead pool and water stops flowing from the dam. Water bankruptcy, in essence, promises too much water without enough supply. Solutions aimed at increasing water storage capacity, such as harvesting water from the Mississippi and creating more dams, disregard demand and only focus on increasing supply. Agriculture in particular is one of the greatest demands placed on the entire Colorado River system, consuming nearly 80% of the basin's water. Water policy efforts must acknowledge the connection between agriculture and water use in the West to ensure proper management. Reporter Saul Elbun tells us that drought in the U.S. West has been deepening for two decades, with no end in sight. Unfortunately for farmers, water use policies established in the early 20th century, a time of more plentiful rainfall, have left regulators struggling with their hands tied as they confront climate change challenges, especially intensifying drought. In a recent interview with CNBC, the Audubon Society's Salt and Sea Program Director, Frank Ruse, said people here used to fish, swim, bring their boats. They went from living in paradise to living in hell. The lake that once covered 400 square miles has shrunk 90%, leaving behind oxygen-deprived, highly salinized water with a rotten egg odor that permeates the surrounding area. Many of the 400 species of birds that once thrived are dying on this critical migrational stop. All but one species of fish has died off and toxins like arsenic and selenium are carried away in the breeze, potentially affecting the health of more than 650,000 nearby residents. Indeed, California has had remarkable success in managing its water resources, realizing a drop in overall agricultural and urban water use since 1995 despite its growing population over those same years. In the end, however, water usage rates could drop to zero, and it would still not solve the problem for some areas where nearly 100% of the water used comes from the Colorado River. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you liked this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.